New Jersey has a tough price gouging law, and we have it so that we ensure that profiteers will not take unfair advantage of people at their most vulnerable times. Those who have been displaced from their homes due to a major disaster, those who have limited resources, and those who desperately seek out fuel, shelter, and the basic necessities for them and their families. After a distinguished career in Congress spanning more than 30 years, Ron Paul has decided to hang up his legislative spurs and return to Texas. But as you might expect, the feisty Dr. Paul is not going quietly, and the congressman joins us right now from the Russell Rotunda in Washington. Congressman, delighted to have you with us. Uh, you Thank know, you. I, I want to talk about uh, price gouging and gas prices and things I know that you have on your mind in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. Before I do, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about uh, the scandal being called Benghazi Gate uh, by, by many. Uh, do you think, first of all, that there really is a scandal there, or do you think uh, this will sort itself out? Well, it may sort itself of out, but I think the real scandal is how we get ourselves involved in messes like this, and we uh, get our people in danger spots. Here we first help uh, some people who didn't like their dictator, and we get permission from NATO to go in there and bomb their country and put somebody in charge, and then it looks like they may well have turned against our people and, and killed our ambassador, and I, I think we, we get ourselves into these messes that we shouldn't. Are you disappointed in uh, General Petraeus? I'm morally more disappointed in our policies that uh, allow us to get into these uh, predicaments and, and people die over it. That's what bothers me the most. President Obama visiting New York Friday, touring the damage from Hurricane Sandy. One of the things all the elected officials were very keen on was the exploitation of the victims by either businesses or unscrupulous uh, hustlers. Uh, you had an interesting take, though, on price gouging when it comes to gasoline prices, something that uh, virtually everyone considers abhorrent. Uh, but you have a different take. What is your take on yeah, price gouging? Well, well, my first gripe is that it's automatically branded as gouging. Well, under certain circumstances, prices go up. Prices go up for certain reasons. To prevent prices from going up, that's called price fixing. And this has been around for about 2,000 years. It was known in the Roman Empire. And one thing that happens, if you don't allow prices to go up and send out the information to increase supply, you get shortages. When you get shortages, you get rationing. And look at what happened. It makes no sense at all. It's so anti-market and anti-freedom, and it ruins things and delays the inevitable, and that's why they're still struggling to solve the problem of shortages. The market works. The most important time to have the market is in periods of crisis and when there are shortages and then the market will adjust for it but people out of the emotion say oh you can't have it he's charging too much he's gouging people no he's trying to alleviate the problems and if the prices go up all of a sudden supplies increase automatically even if it's 10 bucks a gallon 20 bucks a gallon sure the higher the higher they go the faster they come in but they would only be for a day because people would have these supplies go up. And, but once you freeze it below the market, the shortages expand and the problems are not solved. But no, the market will dictate it. Who's going to pay $20? Nobody's going to pay $20. And if it is, somebody's going to come in and somebody's going to automatically have a truck float of, of cans of gasoline with five gallons and they're going to sell them and all of a sudden the price is going to come down. But it would only take about 24, 48 hours to have the supply increase as long as you get the government out of the way and allow the trucks to move. So is that why you're leaving, the inability of Congress to solve our problems? Oh, no, that isn't it. I mean, uh, I, think, I think they've had enough of me up here in Congress. At least we'll still have your son to kick around. Yeah, there you go. But treat him nicely. <laughs> Is he going <laughs> to run for president? Oh, I don't know. I've never had the discussion with him, but uh, time will tell. All right. So nice to talk to you, Congressman Ron Paul. Always engaging, always so thoughtful. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We certainly wish him well in his retirement. That's it for us tonight.